What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2 and another fun build guide. Now ever since I did that AFK Siege Roller Killer setup a few days back, I've been getting questions as far as implementation and uh, people are wondering how I'm doing that as a spawn camp and the roller kill at the same time. Now I have done, uh, I did it for a few hours the other day on live stream, but I wanted to kind of go step by step through the process here. So we are on Crumbled Bulwark Chaos 7, and let's start off at the bottom here. Now of course we want to spawn camp in the build, so we want to kind of figure out the closest we can safely get, or not even safely, the closest we can get, period to the spawn that we're comfortable with. And I'm thinking I'm going to go with right about right there. Get that sand trap down. Then we'll go with the reflect beams. Uh, if you're curious as to what we're doing here, there was a uh, video that I'll link in the description below highlighting this setup uh, specifically for AFK roller killing. So if we can spawn camp and we can AFK roller kill, that's kind of a win-win. And it does take a minute or two to set up compared to, you know, just like a flame R spam build or a weapon man spam build or something like that. However, you can get it done pretty darn quickly once you get in your rhythm when you're doing the grind. Always putting that wall so it's back as far as I can get it, but still inside of the Lightning Strike Aura. See, I don't like to go directly on the stairs like that. Let's see if we can go like this, maybe. Kind of half on the stairs and half off. Get the sand trap in. Those reflect beams. And then the flame are in the LSA. Uh, once again, the wall, you can use any wall. I just use the Viper's Fangs because I like it. You want it to be inside that LSA. That way there's no issues at all with any sort of nasty Lady Orcs running about. Mm, can't quite go that far now. Gonna have to do that wonky uh, on the stairs setup, which I don't really like to do, but I did want to uh, just get as close as I could safely for the spawn camp here and then we should have room for one more wall and then some sky guards to help out with that air and there we go we've got 310 left i'm just going to go ahead and dump it right into the sky guards and we'll just kind of kick it somewhere I will run around and look at stuff, but I'm going to try not to participate as at all if I can. Now, um, of course, especially in Wave 1, there is a chance of a Lady Orc leak. So you're going to want to keep an eye out on your mini-map, at least through Wave 1. That Lady Orc's up on the wall there. But the LSA eventually, eventually took her out. And as you see, it just it just wrecks everything. You've got uh, you know the R's in to take the cobalts out of the sky, and then everything else for the most part just gets completely CC'd up in that proton beam. Now you'll see the power of the whole setup once we get a siege roller, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about there. This wall's taking a little bit of a beating, but no interaction, and it's still. Uh, still helped out. Now I mentioned it in the other video but I like to pack everything up to the front side of the proton beam like this and the reason being is the roller has to get essentially past your traps so that the reflect beams are kinda in the sweet spot behind the roller and having this large tail of the proton beams allows that roller to keep getting CC'd as it creeps its way through and lets the reflect beam do its thing. Now let's go ahead and throw around some upgrades here. Do we have a siege roller yet? No, nope, it looks like an ogre down there. 
and just essentially go through one on everything. Uh, as far as a regular priority, if you're like speed grinding, you'd want to just worry about the proton beam and the reflect pretty much. Uh, the RS can wait until last, but the the proton and the reflect are definitely doing the bulk of the work. Looks like I missed that aura. That's all right. And looking good. We'll go ahead and hang out down here this time. Since uh, this is where the boss is coming, we'll check him out. And as you see, everything just basically gets stopped. Now, um, of course, I'm running around the map, but remember, right now, if uh, you wanted to, you could be off making a sandwich. Or turned around getting caught up on Daredevil or Gotham or the Punisher now, which is out, which is kind of cool. Now, overpowering a map, of course, is not going to be a thing for too much longer. With Onslaught coming, uh, we'll have difficulties that we can push into that we're just not capable of doing until we get a little bit of that ancient power and the prestiging. And here comes our first boss. Let's see how he fares. Is he going to make it through? No, there we go. Just takes a couple of crits on that reflect beam and it's all over. Now remember, we've got four explosions going off at the same time here, so even though it's a 30% chance to crit, we've got four of them that are all proccing, so even if just one of them crits, like uh, right now at tier two, it's critting for four over four million damage. Uh, you know, if two or three of them crit, of course, bosses are just gonna evaporate. And yeah, basically going to just stick with the same upgrade priority. I am going to uh, look for the lane bosses. We still don't have a siege roller yet, which is unfortunate. And from here, I think I'm just going to go right into the reflex and the protons. And yeah, looking good from there. And once again. I do want to run around as I don't want to just stand here, and I don't have a show to get caught up on right now. However, I am going to not participate unless I absolutely have to. I mean, everything's just getting wrecked. Just the sand trap and the proton alone. The proton slows them long enough for the sand trap to proc. And then, of course, once the sand trap pops, it's good game. Everything's going to be stuck there. Now the sand trap, of course, doesn't do its stun until it's at the end of its cycle. But no, you know, a full pack of mobs there. And that stun is going to get him. Stand back over here and let the assassins just uh, do their thing. Just as if I was completely AFK. Yeah, make sure you're in range of the sky guards. That way, when the assassin finally does drop off of you, your sky guard's going to take care of business. And let's see. Now oh, there's a siege roller finally. And I think that lane is all juiced up too. Get this lane squared away down here. Yeah, and that looks good. Just kind of let it fly. It's definitely, like I said, it takes a couple of seconds longer to set up than, say, a flame R spam or a weapon manufacturer spam. Of course, you can throw those down really, really fast. And this will take you, you know, an extra 10 seconds, 15 seconds or whatever, which, you know, if you're really grinding, of course, you're looking at that. However, it does add the casualness of being able to not sweat anything. It helps that out quite a bit. Now, if you're really clever with a uh, well-placed gift card or a um, auto clicker or an AFK macro, you can even park in one of these lanes and just get your right click spamming down the lane as you go. Now I'm not going to do it uh, on this one because I want you all to see uh, the roller dying legit and untouched. And 
I'm going to make sure I stay alive here, though. As I don't want to miss Mr. Rolodion. And you see now he's about midway through. Still not to the point where the reflex are in the sweet spot. Now it's getting a little closer to the tail end. Just need him to nudge forward just a little bit more. There he goes. And then as soon as that reflect gets, uh, you know, the full range at the siege roller sweet spot, then it's just good game. Let's see. Hopefully we get another roller. No. There's one. All right. One's better than nothing. We'll take a look at it down on that lower lane. You know, I haven't done a whole lot on this side of the map. Maybe I'll throw a couple of upgrades in over here. Yeah, throw another 200 in here. Actually, there's enough to do that one, too. There we go. So we can ignore, ignore those lanes, and then let's come down here, down to the bottom, and keep an eye on that siege roller. Just let the assassins do their thing. Eventually, they'll drop off. Or even if they kill you, you're going to spawn in a safe point where you don't have to worry about them hopping on you again. I kind of wanted to stay alive to see the roller die, though. <laughs> it looks like I'll barely survive it. Now, of course, I'm going to have to move around to be able to watch the roller, so let me just go ahead and heal myself back up. Roller should be popping any second here. And let's see what happens to this guy. Come on, assassin, get off me. And the roller's just getting to the front of the reflex, so not really doing anything to it yet. But remember that proton beam is going to keep CCing it until it's well, well into that defense there. And now you see the sand trap popped. And the sand trap popped almost at the perfect spot, too. There it goes. Oh, yeah. So the sand trap just completely locks it down, and then the reflect beams can just do their thing. And uh, there it is in action, the, the roller killer setup. And, oh, man, it is effective. There's no doubt about it. So anyway, thank you again for watching. Uh, click that like button and please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And I will see you soon with some more Dungeon Defenders 2. Take it easy.